find yourself getting highly anxious when it comes to going to events, potluck dinners, work events, buffets, and you don't know what's going to be offered for food. Fully get it. That's so common, but I promise you it doesn't have to be so difficult. So tonight in real time, I am in the club lounge. This is a buffet style place. I don't know what's being served. I'm going to talk you through my exact process for how to go about navigating this situation. So doesn't take up too much of your headspace, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is assess the situation. What I like to do is take a scan and see everything that's being offered. Take a look at everything that's out before I even grab a plate or make a decision. So let's first check on our options for the evening. So they make it easier. It's set up in different stations. So we have a station with some crackers, rolls. We've got some meats and cheeses little hors d'oeuvres we have pigs and blankets so we have a soup station with some minestrone soup and then a really nice salad bar with some salad on it of course and then a little mixed up salad with everything individual so you really have the ability to add on what you want and then we have the hot bar that has the main items for tonight which has some chicken potatoes and vegetables so now that I've scanned the brain, the first thing that I like to do is get my plate in my hand, but think about loading up my meal with veggies and protein. That's always the goal for me anytime I'm in an area where I can't necessarily control what I'm eating. So we're gonna first talk about how I go about choosing foods. And secondary to that, I'll show you how I go about tracking things because I know in particular, people get nervous about tracking mixed food items. So I'm gonna start building my plate. First thing I'm gonna hit up is the salad bar. I'm a salad girl, I like that. It fills me up, it adds a volume. So we're gonna start with salad and veggies. So I have a ton of veggie options. They do have a mixed cucumber salad up here. I'll get a little bit of that. I see that's gonna have some kind of dressing on it, but this will add some more veggies to my salad. Now spoon size, if you really want to get a little bit easier, if you're someone questioning tracking, you could just take a regular spoon like this, dip it in here. That's probably going to be, that's over, a little over a tablespoon, I would say, and that's about all I'm going to use. And that's just one way for me to gauge about how much dressing I'm adding to this. Now a quick tip for you if you're able to do this. I went ahead and I only got my salad plate together that you saw so obviously it's not a ton of calories, veggies, some salad dressing, no protein right? Not a ton of carbs but if you have the time to do this get your salad plate, your veggie plate, start with your veggies. Get a big plate and get your big plate and eat that first before you go up and grab anything else because if you get a mixed plate with other food on it you're probably gonna eat all the tasty stuff first right although I do think a salad's tasty but this will slow you down a salad takes a long time to chew many of us eat way too fast we're multitasking and even if you're at an event I highly suggest Get your salad plate, get your veggie plate, go sit down, get away from the buffet table. Don't be lurking over the snacks and all of that stuff. So get your veggies in, they're gonna be high volume, filling, take a seat, eat your salad. If someone's like, girl, all you're eating is a salad, come on. You tell them, I'm starting with my salad. I'm gonna go back up for more. Don't you worry about me, worry about you. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna eat my salad first. I'm gonna take my time with it, drink some water, and then I'm gonna head back up there to grab my protein, carbs, and some other good stuff. It's so interesting, because when you actually stop to take the time, even something like a cucumber, right? We get so used to rushing through everything in life. But to actually take the time to slow down and be more of a mindful eater has so many benefits beyond just meal satisfaction. Your digestion is gonna be better. You're going to be better in tune with your body and what it's telling you. So even something as simple as a cucumber, taking your time to chew 15, 20 bites, maybe 30, depends on the food item, of course, and depends on how big of a bite that you take. Why? Oh, I'm responding. I'm 
Easy. Give it a try. And now that I've ate my salad plate, let's go figure out what I'm going to eat for protein and veggies. Here's the kicker when you're at the other places where you don't know how the food was prepared. I can already tell just by looking at it, this stuff is going to have a lot of oil on it. So very impressed with the meal selection here. Everything is very healthy. I'm personally not really wanting pigs in blankets. Sure, they taste good. Not really worth it for me for the calories. So you have to decide what's worth it for you with calories. I like what they have for the main meal. So I'm gonna go grab that, but we'll take a look at it. I'm gonna keep in mind the fact that that's likely gonna be a lot higher in fat than if I prepared it at home. So the other part of eating out at meals in situations like this is you have to be honest with yourself. Don't fool yourself with how things are prepared. If it tastes extra buttery and salty, it's because that's how it was prepared. And that's okay. Just take that into account for your daily calories. I'm honestly not really a chicken thigh person, not something I eat a lot. I'm more of a chicken breast kind of gal. Um, not only due to fat content, but due to taste. But this is what we have today, so we're gonna give it a go. This is lemon roasted chicken. Personally, I take the ones on the bottom because I feel like that means no one's fooled with them. You know what I'm saying? I get nervous about the kiddos. What they're doing up in here with the thing. Okay, next we have roasted red potatoes. I already had potatoes this morning. I'm not gonna have a huge helping. These are definitely like loaded with like oil and stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna take a small strip of them. As a petite gal like myself, too much fat adds, fat just adds up really quick in general for me. But when I go really high in fat, I just, digestion brains don't feel really well. And that's just personally not working for me. We have caramelized root veggies. It looks like we've got Brussels sprouts and parsnips, I'm gonna guess. Also, definitely oil. So we've got a whole oily plate here while you may say, you know, this is where I think about when I have clients and they're like, well, I got a really healthy meal. I had potatoes, I had veggies, and I had chicken. Perfect, right? It sounds great. But a lot of this stuff can go south in the preparation method, which I don't know exactly how they prepared it. I'm not going to ask the chef. It's, it's not that serious. I don't have food allergies. So what I'm going to do is just guesstimate it in terms of estimating my macros and I'm gonna go back to the tip I already gave you in terms of slowing down with how I eat so I can be better in tune with what my body is telling me. I don't typically eat super high fat meals so my body is gonna tell me if I'm getting full right so the more fat we have more calorically dense we should probably feel a little full a little quicker. So slowing down here being in tune with how much we're eating can be really helpful in this scenario. So getting yourself away from the buffet, you're not standing at the snack table, we're going to sit down and eat our meal. So, that's really good. Fat estimate, honestly, I mean chicken thighs are already naturally higher in fat. I can like squeeze, I'm squeezing a little juice out of it, but it doesn't taste like there's a ton of oil added to it per se. It's more so like a lemon, tastes like a lemon marinade of some sort that they put on it. I don't think it's adding a significant amount of fat, but definitely probably some, so I'll probably account for some additional fat from the marinade. I think these are parsnips, I'm not sure, but... I don't really like them. I don't know why. Maybe they're not parsnips, but I'm just not a fan. So here's the other thing for you. When you're at events, if you don't like something, don't eat it. Don't feel bad. And I know I've been critiqued about this here on the internet before that, you know, people are starving in other countries. And I fully understand that. But me finishing this plate versus not finishing this plate will not change that scenario whatsoever. So you always have to do what's best for you. If you don't like something, don't eat it. Don't be worried about hurting someone's feelings. If it's not for you, say, if someone if someone's sensitive about it, say they made a dish and they're like, oh, did you not like that? You can just say, oh no, I'm just full. You know, like you don't have to be mean about it, but there's plenty of ways to approach those things. You don't need to eat out of pure pressure. And I hear that quite a bit in these situations. Here's the other thing. You always have to pick and choose what's worth it to you. So this is a relatively healthy offering tonight, right? Um, but likely you're going to be somewhere where there's desserts out, there's all kinds of other indulgences. And the one thing we haven't talked about yet is the indulgence of alcohol. That's a lot of times where people can feel very pressured or it's just habitual. You're used to at 
certain events, always drinking, whether it's with your friends or your family, and it can be hard to just break that habit. Um, but the alcohol itself is the one thing for me personally, I'd rather eat my calories versus drinking it. That's always been my preference. I'm not a huge drinker. So I would say pick and choose your battles there and choose one or the other. If you're wanting to indulge and have an alcoholic beverage, then I would definitely maybe skip dessert or you have to count that into your overall intake because that is going to hurt your progress. So I personally believe it's better to just avoid the alcohol altogether. You'll feel better. You'll think more clear-minded throughout the evening as you continue. A lot of times people drink and then they they lose their ability to make good decisions, right? And then they get really snacky and then they end up overeating. So I personally would suggest skipping the alcohol and just sticking with focusing on the foods that you're eating, hydrating. You can still have a drink in your hand, get a soda or something if you're at an event where you feel like you need something in your hand. I get that too. But that is the one thing that will absolutely slow your progress and not provide you with any health benefits. And that's not to say that I don't drink on occasion, but I do it when it's totally worth it to me. Now let's talk about how to go about tracking those meals you eat when you're out and you have no idea what goes into stuff. Rule number one, so many people just decide it's too hard and I'm not going to track. You can go that route, but you are going to learn absolutely nothing about the meal choices that you made while you were out. So I'm not saying you have to track for eternity, but it's definitely a great learning tool to go about making your decisions and then adding them up in your tracker to see how you did essentially. And yes, it's not perfect, but I think that's where many of you fail is that you're always striving for perfection, which comes down to this all or nothing mindset. And so you just decide to give up completely, which is totally not logical if you actually think about achieving your goals just because you can't do something 100% to totally just boycott the entire mission doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it now? So I highly encourage you to just track the dang macros. I don't wanna hear that it's too hard, it's too tough. This just took me three minutes adding it into my Grounds app tracker the day after the fact to estimate the macros. So let me share with you what I did here. One of the things that can be a good tool for you is to have those reference points for whatever scooper you're using, whether it's a ladle, a big spoon, grabbing a tablespoon, and really getting a good awareness for your portion sizes. I've pretty much mastered this. You can master it easily too, just by weighing your portions while you're at home. You'll start to gain a good awareness of what things look like based on portion size or you can also use a plate method in terms of how it fits and sits on your plate, or even like the palm of your fist is a good representation of about four ounces, understanding that everyone's palm and hand is a different size. It's not an exact science, friends. We are just going for the actual estimation here, all right? So I estimated about a cup of spring mix that I put in for my salad, cucumber with the peel. I estimated about a half cup of those. I used original ranch dressing. I entered in cucumber with the peel and estimated about a half cup of those. Original ranch dressing, and if you remember, I used that just a regular tablespoon to put it on, which is fairly equivalent to a tablespoon, so a good reference point there. There was a little tomato cucumber salad. Now, when I ate that, I didn't really taste a ton of flavor on it, but regardless, I'm entering it as a tomato cucumber salad that I found in here. So two things you can do when it comes to mixed meals, you can try to find the mixed meal option in your tracker. Sometimes I'll search out a generic, like a restaurant that's very popular, something like Applebee's or TGI Fridays, some type of restaurant that's everywhere because normally that's a good reference point for macros. Or I will just take what's in here. The other alternative is breaking it down. For this, I chose this Tzatziki's tomato cucumber salad. I only had a couple bites of it, but when it comes to tracking meals out like this or buffet style, overestimate is always the key because you likely consume more calories than what you even realize. So I added in a serving of that, which is probably an overestimate, but that's okay. Next, that was my little appetizer, if you will. When it came to my main meal, I had the boneless chicken thigh. 
try. It did not have the skin on it. There was maybe a little piece that I feel like I picked the skin off. That's going to make or break the difference in the macros here. So you should know if there's skin on it. So one boneless chicken thigh. I just added it from Trader Joe's. So here was a chicken thigh that was marinated and I'm deciding to break that meal component up. So I'm first adding in that boneless chicken thigh. Secondary to that, I'm adding in a lemon pepper marinade because they used something on it for sure. So I wanna make sure I factor that in. Next, I'm adding in those roasted red potatoes. Um, the roasted red potatoes I selected, this portion does have four grams of fat added to it, but I know there was more fat in this meal, so we'll get to that in one moment. Lastly, I did get those root veggies. I didn't really like them very much, so I only took a couple bites, but still, I know I ate them, so I'm going to add them in for my awareness, and I just added in an ounce because it was a really small portion size. I only ate a couple little bites, so... In addition to that, you're probably thinking, well, Kara, that chicken, the potatoes, the veggies, they were all soaked in oil, right? So at this point in time, what I like to do if I've selected options that don't already clearly have enough fat in there, I will just add in some olive oil. So here I've added in one tablespoon of olive oil. I could overestimate and go two tablespoons of olive oil, but I'm going with the one tablespoon of olive oil for the moment in terms of how much I ate. So let's another way you can do it too if you know be realistic a lot of times like last night I could clearly see the oil on the food but sometimes you just may not see it um, there's a lot of ways that they sneak oil and butter into food that you may not visibly see or even taste so it's a good reference point if you're able to listen to your body and you recognize you're pretty full from like a small meal it's likely it was higher in fat or calories that you're not accounting for so you could always just throw in an extra tablespoon of butter or olive oil to accommodate for those calories and give you a good reference point. So for me, I did estimate this meal at 551 calories, 27 grams of protein, 31 carbs, and 36 grams of fat. And I will say that's probably pretty accurate. I think I'm pretty close based on what I consumed. Maybe the fat could be a little bit higher, but maybe not. All in all, that gives me an idea of what I potentially consumed. So the reminder is here, it's not going to be perfect, and we have to quit thinking in these black and white scenarios, and that just because you can't perfectly track, you shouldn't just throw out this tool completely, and a lot of people do that. So in times like this, when it's not a structured day, a structured event, I encourage you to still utilize the tools that you have and that you normally utilize in your daily life and implement those to the best of your ability. Quit just giving up because it can't be perfect like you would plan for and waiting till the next day because what that tells me is you're not fully committing to changing your lifestyle. You're just looking at this as uh, you know, a destination focus type thing. And if you're thinking in these absolutes where it's all or nothing, you are going to continuously be getting nowhere. You're going to eventually keep spinning your wheels and probably not make great progress. Not to say that you can't go to these events. I don't typically track, right? Because for me, I've been doing this long enough. I have a good sense of how I eat, portion sizes, how my body responds to things so I can really just listen to my body. But sadly, many people aren't in tune with their bodies anymore. And it does take time to create this skill. So be patient with yourself. But I do hope this gives you a little bit of solid advice to navigate some of these unknowns. If you have more questions on scenarios like this and you enjoyed this video, please drop that down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.